or, or an own goal, but it was a defining moment in the game, really, wasn't it? <laughs> it would matter if it was me. I would definitely be How's trying to claim that. You wouldn't be out there crossing it in all fairness. No, so. no, no. <laughs> no, it was a defining moment because there was very little in the game and, and, until that point. Um, it was quite a fortunate goal. And as we see it here, just watch Trent Alexander-Arnold, his, his desire to get forward as soon as they win the ball, as soon as they've got good possession. As I mentioned at half-time, him and Henderson switch positions almost here. And then, I mean, you can quite clearly see that's going way to the left of the goal as yeah. uh, Trent crosses it. And it's a little bit of fortune, but, you know, the more crosses you put in, the more fortune you're going to get. Yeah. Awkward one, as I mentioned at half-time for Nick Pope. I just... I don't know, just, uh, just think that we actually look at his starting position. He's only like three, three, four yards off his line when Trent Alexander-Arnold actually makes contact with the ball. And you just think maybe he can backpedal and adjust himself a little bit more, whether he thought it was always going over and it's dipped under the bar uh, at the last minute. It's a, it's, a, it's a freak one. It's one of those ones we, we, we have seen before. And it, they just sometimes just seem to catch goalkeepers off guard and in the wrong position. Trent Alexander-Arnold mentioned the word clean, the words clean sheet numerous mm. times there. Do, do you yeah. always feel if Liverpool can get that with the obvious armoury they've got, they'll just win football matches? It's the one thing that's been directed against them at the start of this season. The amount of chances they're, they're um, letting their opponents have, the amount of goals that, that teams are scoring against them. So I think he's conscious of that. Um, it's what Jurgen Klopp's getting asked in most interviews he's, he's uh, conducting, is, is what's happening to the defence. But I think today it looked pretty solid. We, we also questioned you know, a different style of centre-forward playing against the centre-half today. And that's one thing, especially Van Dijk. If you put a quick lad against him, you're never worried. You put a strong lad against him. Not, no matter what you throw against that man, he just seems to have the answers for everything. And he, again, he, uh, he played the game at a canter today. And yeah. at the other end of the pitch... Burnley found out to their cost, and Ben Me in particular, if you make mistakes, yeah. you're going to get punished. Particularly when you make mistakes in the position that, that Ben Me did. There, so high up the pitch, literally three or four yards from the halfway line, if you make a mistake there, Liverpool's pace is always going to, going to give you serious problems. This is a better angle. Do not give the ball away there because of all this space in behind Tarkovsky and Ben Me that, that Liverpool can exploit. And... Once he does that, Mike, I think we all feared this was going to happen. Yeah, you've got pace either side of you then, haven't you? With Firmino, he's, he's almost got to take your pick. Which way do you go, right or left? He decides to go left. Mane opens his body up. He, he virtually tells the goalkeeper, I'm going to put yeah. it in that, in that side. But if you can open your body up, you've just, you, you're enhancing your, you know, the, the ability to hit an accurate shot. Yeah. And as soon as he opens his body up, it's, you know, he's probably got a good yard. You know you've got about a good yard inside that post, and a goalkeeper can't save it. It's a very good goal from Liverpool, Liverpool's point of view. We've seen it before. Win it high, attack quick. And um, two of the front three have yeah. ended up with a goal today. Roberto Firmino, first Brazilian to 50 in the Premier League. Yeah, which is good, because this is a, he isn't your conventional number nine. He is someone that assists, as he does here, in many ways, for, for Mo Salah. Rolls it in behind and then gets it back. Actually, it's not a pass from Salah. It's just ended up sort of stumbling into back into Firmino a little bit, but it's a great finish, Michael. Isn't it? Yeah, the, when the ball comes across you from this angle, it's all about keeping over the ball. You can see he really exaggerates that knee over the ball because when the ball comes from this angle, it can go high, high and wide off them, but certainly high. And you've just got to focus on really keeping your body over the ball, keep it down, and he does that. And it's uh, goalkeeper, not much chance there. So Mane scored, Firmino scored, Salah hasn't. And you noticed something about his play. <laughs> well, not just today, but particularly stood out for you. Well, I don't just think it's me that noticed. I think Jurgen Klopp noticed because we saw his reaction. Certainly his teammates are noticing. You look at the arms. Um, and what are they noticing? Well, they're noticing that he doesn't pass much. Look at this. This is unbelievable. It's on his right foot. It's a weak foot. He probably... He'll struggle to reach the goal with his right foot there. He's got no momentum. He's leaning back. I mean, it barely reaches the goal. He's just got to slip it into his teammate. And again, I mean, here with, you know, with his other strike partner, Mane, he, he should have been passing that just before he's, he's cut inside, eventually gets snuffed out, and that's the bit that infuriates everybody. Infuriates him. You see, just before, uh, as, he's, as he's not passed it, Henderson throwing his arms up, you've got Mane, you've got Firmino. So I think there's everybody starting to get a little bit agitated by Mo Salah in front of goal. Now, what you've got is three different types, I feel. You've got Firmino, that is just the most unselfish player that you can ever imagine. Yeah. You've got Mane, that is very, very good. He's, he's unselfish, but he's selfish in the right times. And then you've got 
you know, salad that is very, very selfish. So the blend is actually OK, because I always joke that if you've got a good partnership, one needs to be selfish. I always used to like playing with Emil Heskey because he was very unselfish. But put two just selfish... For, just for clarification, what were you? I was the selfish one. OK, that's all right. But put two selfish players together and there can be fireworks. I don't think it works perfectly, and I think that's what we're starting to see, a yeah. couple of little cracks in that. Sadio Mane when he came off? Sadio Mane, mm -hmm. when he came off, I mean, look, he was obviously a little bit upset at maybe being the one that was withdrawn. His reaction with Jurgen Klopp was a little frosty. And he's shouting and screaming there, and he keeps pointing behind him, and he keeps waving back out onto the pitch as if to say, how about you take him off out there occasionally? And, and he doesn't seem to be one of passing it. He doesn't seem to be wanting to involve us when he should. Look, we can, only, we can only assume that's what he's saying, but it kind of felt like that. And, I, and as Michael says, I... I think we've all noticed a difference in Mo Salah. Since he's gone to Liverpool and has become this prolific, free-scoring wide player, he's become a different animal in terms of as soon as he gets anywhere in around that 18-yard box, you're not seeing anybody else, Michael, is he? No, during the game, me and Andy are saying, wow, why didn't he pass that? Wow, why well, didn't he pass that? Can I just throw something there? in there? In the last two years, we've seen this guy in all competitions for Liverpool score 74 goals. Mm. 74 goals in two seasons. And nobody's criticising and... him as a player. But you want him to pass more. Oh, I think in certain situations, then everybody can. Listen, I wasn't, you know, the most unselfish player myself, so it's almost... I'm being a little bit hypocritical here. But we can all improve. You know, Ronaldo and Messi are scoring 50-plus. Mm. You know, the t everybody... Just because you score 30 goals or 35 goals doesn't mean, right, that's it, that's my job done. Of course you can keep get contributing to the team. And on certain occasions, we've seen a couple there, we've highlighted a couple there, that you think... It is enhancing the team. It is better for everybody if he lays it off in certain situations as well. And is that kind of thing forgotten about now when they go in the dressing room? Or do they have, what, what happens, Andy? Uh, yeah, I think it's forgotten about. I think it is because look, they've won. They've won handsomely. They've, and, and, and the manager will be quick, to, I'm sure, to get on top of that. But it might not go away completely. It mm. might still fester a little bit in the background. And it's something that they've got to try and make sure that they, they, they deal with. I think it's different if... If when Mo Salah's going through, he sees Sadio Mane, decides to have a shot himself and then got, turns around to his mate and goes, sorry, look, I just... Sometimes you have to live with that. As a midfield player, I've lived with that for years with strikers. You make a run past them, you think they're going to put you in, they take the shot themselves. As long as they acknowledge your run and they've seen you, well, you can accept it. It's when they don't even pick their head up and don't, not even aware of the run, the 40-yard run you've just made. That's when it starts to annoy you and upset you a little bit. And by the way, out of them 74, how many of others laid on a plate for Mo Salah? A good few. A good few. So I think he's got to be careful. I, I don't think you'll, you'll have any complaints from the Liverpool players about his output. It's top, top quality. But to keep that harmony right, he's got to make sure at times, like those ones Michael showed, where he's stopped the ball, it's on his weaker foot. Just roll it to your mate. Just do it. Just do the right thing at the right time. I think he's just got to make sure he does that. Otherwise, otherwise, players do become a little disappointed in him. And it just might be the difference when it's in a big game against Man City. Instead of rolling it to him, you take a shot yourself because you just don't feel like you're getting it both ways. So you've got to be a bit careful. Interesting. Uh, nevertheless, three goals and three points for confirming what you suggested. Yeah, I mean, we were pretty sure because, you know, when you've played the game, you can see the reaction of, of different players. And, you know, when you start lip-reading as well, you see him... You mentioned passing, you, you mentioned Mo. Um, so it was obvious. And listen, these things happen all the time. We, mm. we, we, we mustn't make a mountain out of a molehill here. But it is something, and if you don't cut it straight away and, and actually get to the source of it, these cracks can start to open. And as Andy says, that can then start having an effect out on the pitch. Now, it's not having that effect at the moment. Mm. But you don't want that little bit of tension between two of your better players, let's say. Um, I don't think Firmino is that type of guy that, that will you know, lose sleep over, oh, he didn't pass it me here, didn't pass it me that. But obviously, Sadio Mane is. Mm -hmm. And he won't, if he's going to lay a ball on to, to Mo Salah, then he expects it in return. So I think it's just important that, that Jurgen Klopp actually just nips it in the bud mm -hmm. before it gets... Uh, I was just about big. to say, Andy, when we talk about these two teams, Liverpool and City, and the fine margins we saw last season, these are the managerial challenges, aren't Correct. they? Managing yeah. these big personalities. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and up to now, Jurgen Klopp hasn't had a... They've been a dream, the front three for him. They've been fantastic work rate. Uh, as Michael says, they've got the great blend and combinations that, that you need in, in, in a strike force. So he doesn't need any, a, any friction between any of them, any tension there. He's got to make sure he's on top of that. And as he just said, we keep that in the dressing room, we'll deal with that in the dressing room. 
but we'll keep our eye on that over the next few <laughs> weeks for sure. We certainly will. Burnley beaten at Turf Moor. When we come back, we'll get the reaction of Sean Dice. We'll also hear from that man. First clean seat of the season, a personal European award as well. What a week it's been for him and Liverpool.